There exists in the heart of woodland country a creature that legends are truly made of. The First Nations of North America have claimed this creature as one of their own and called Bigfoot a spirit brother. However, just because the tribes call them family does not mean that all clans and tribes get along. Our history tells of the native tribes clashing and making peace with the hairy men of the woods. But oral history suggests that these larger and stronger brothers were a people to be feared and were often avoided at all costs. Sightings of hairy upright walking men date back into our history when David Thompson, an English explorer, documented unusually large footprints while on expedition with his team along the Canadian Rockies in 1811. In his journal, Mr. Thompson questions if the footprints that they found were made from a bear or from another animal. His final conclusion suggests that his belief was that these prints were not of a bear. Perhaps the most important visual documentation of Bigfoot to date is that of Roger Patterson and Robert Gimlin. While the pair were on horseback in the Californian mountains, they stumbled on some very distinct and unique looking tracks. After following the tracks, they were startled off their horses by a creature that was tall and hairy. This creature walked upright like a man, but the facial features were only slightly different. The creature was walking away from them, and one of the men had enough common sense, after pushing his fear aside, to capture the woodland creature on film. This film would become the most controversial evidence to date since 1967, and it would become the focal point of speculation and groundbreaking research on the subject. Sightings continue around the world, and today there is a call to action to help drive this creature towards public attention and out of the woods for good. Investigators, researchers, and scientists continue their efforts with positive results, but with little regard for the negative footprint they are leaving behind. We have seen the negative effects of bear encroachment as the human habitat overlaps bear habitat. We have seen greater numbers of bear attacks and bear sightings in populated areas. Although we do not hear of bear attacks often, they do happen, and this is also said true with Bigfoot encroachment. We have positive results to prove the existence of Bigfoot, but at what cost? The research does not show the negative impact of feeding or setting up camera traps or going in the woods to deliberately seek these creatures out. Most of us have done this assuming that Bigfoot is just an animal. What is Bigfoot? Eyewitness accounts report that Bigfoot is not just an animal. It has both animal and human qualities that we have not been able to fully investigate. We can only piece together the evidence that we have and this leads us to all sorts of assumptions if we are not careful. It is true that Bigfoot are intelligent. We have not yet been able to discover the level of intelligence Bigfoot have and it is only with field studies have we been able to determine that these are highly intelligent creatures that have the ability to problem solve on a level far beyond human understanding. Bigfoot seem to know what cameras are and avoid them when a game camera is implemented for field study. Bigfoot seem to know an individual's intentions towards the creature. Bigfoot understand people's belief and system of faith in God and the spiritual afterlife. Bigfoot understand friendships and human bonds with others. Bigfoot understand the concept of giving and kindness. Bigfoot understand the belief or lack of belief a person has in them and will alter their behavior accordingly to that belief. It has been my experience with the Bigfoot creatures that they understand our curiosity about them and they seem elusive enough to get us to go back into the woods and seek them out. Why? There is an aspect to Bigfoot that scientific evidence cannot explain. To understand why Bigfoot act on intelligent behavior that allows us to become more curious about them 
can only be answered with godly direction. Growing curiosity about Bigfoot tends to put people in harm's way as they forget that the woods naturally can be a harmful environment to explore. By all accounts, Bigfoot seem like timid and shy creatures, but this isn't always the case. There are reports that Bigfoot can become aggressive, and it should be assumed that human and animal alike, we all at times get moody and territorial. Bigfoot safety. The best way to keep yourself safe from any danger in the woods is to be cautious and know your environment. The number one thing you should do before venturing out into the woods, thank God for your safety and ask him for protection. Believe that he will when you ask and make this a daily prayer. Get to know your Bibles and read about Jesus so you can carry him in your heart always. Don't go into the woods alone. Don't stray off hiking trails. Do always travel in pairs and groups. Always stay in visual sight of one another. Stay close together. Hold hands if need be. And when you are traveling with young children, connect yourselves by a rope tied around each other's waist or wrists. If you encounter Bigfoot, do not panic. Do not make eye contact. Look at its feet or the ground just in front of its feet and back away calmly. Do not turn your back on the creature. In fact, it is advised for you to look around your environment because sometimes when you see a Bigfoot, there could be more hiding in the sidelines. If you are in groups, do not leave anyone behind. Leave the scene together. Hold hands and walk away calmly together. Call upon Jesus to help you. Everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. Romans chapter 10 verse 13. Those who know your name will trust in you. For you, Lord, have never forsaken those who seek you. Psalm 9 10. I, Shannon Gilmore, am living proof that God's word is trustworthy and true. I have some stories I can share with you. I have called upon the Lord many, many, many times in my life, and I have had to call upon his name with the encounters I've had with Bigfoot also. If you do see Bigfoot, if you see Bigfoot footprints, Please tell the camp or forest authorities so that they can better alert the public so the proper amount of spatial habitat can be given to Bigfoot. You are welcome to contact me and if I am able, I will come out and investigate the area. I will conduct interviews either in person or over the phone and I will talk with you and answer your questions as best that I can. You have my comfort and my support and reassurance always. Because of how I encountered Bigfoot, there was no support system in place and I've learned from first-hand knowledge with the guidance and protection from God what these creatures are. The truth isn't easy for a lot of people to hear and that's okay. We all have to come to our understandings of things at our own pace. I just want to reassure you that God is very aware of what is going on in this world. And just because one of these things should make its presence known to you or someone that you know, it does not mean that you alter your belief in God. My own faith was challenged by my encounters of Bigfoot, and I've met pastors and churchgoers who have abandoned their faith to embrace all sorts of beliefs. God tells us to stay away from just because they saw Bigfoot in a way that the public denies or cannot explain. I want to reassure you that Bigfoot are not to be feared. Respected in the way that we keep our distance and give them the proper amount of space? Sure, yes. But to fear them in the way of never going into the woods again? No. The number one thing you need to focus on is to trust in your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. When you live for Him and love Him with all your heart, all your strength, with all your mind, and all your soul, 
you are giving a blessing that guarantees your safety. God still requires us to use our common sense, and he expects us to not put him to the test by putting ourselves in deliberate danger. But in times of your life, when you are faced with problems and challenges like you've never seen before, because of who you choose to live for, you are guaranteed protection. Paul in scripture tells us to wear the armor of God, and this armor is likened to Roman armor of our biblical history. The Roman guards wore their armor all the time because they had to be ready at a moment's notice should the call for war be decreed. The Roman army men actually grew into their armor, and this is what we are called to do. We ourselves wear an armor, and with daily practice, we become conditioned and disciplined that our spiritual armor becomes like our regular clothing and it no longer becomes too big of a fit. Our armor is unseen and though we can't see shiny metal breastplates and golden helmets, how we know we are protected is by whom we choose to follow. Through following the teachings of Jesus and practicing his direction in our own lives is what the armor of God truly is. Rather, clothe yourselves with the Lord Jesus Christ. Romans chapter 13 verse 14. I encourage you to read Ephesians chapter 6 verses 10 through 18. As scripture gives us a piece-by-piece piece example of the armor that we are to daily wear through Christian practice by implementing the teachings of Jesus Christ in our lives. I wrote two books on my encounters with Bigfoot, and I do not recommend these books for people who are of a younger age. However, it is because I feel so strongly in the message that God wants me to share that I am talking with you today. Bigfoot may be a creature unknown to man, but it isn't unknown to God. They are not of me, is what God said to me one day in prayer. And before I had my sighting and encounters with Bigfoot, I would pray, God, if there is anything that is not of you on our land, please expose it. And expose it, he did. And as much as I want to tell you of the exciting detail of those encounters, I am not permitted to tell you any more than what I've written about in my books. I share my story not to cause anyone fear or curiosity, but to help spread the message of Jesus Christ because it is because of him that I am no longer bothered by Bigfoot. It is because of him that I am alive today through following the idols of this world that have nothing to do with Sasquatch, but I just wanted to put this in, that in my life, following Jesus has not always been consistent. But his word in my life and his blessings when I have followed him and maintained a consistent attitude and love for God, his word has been consistent in my life. And that's what I want to share with you today. God is who he says he is, and he will protect us from the evils of this world. And I have to say that Bigfoot still come around my property, but not in the way that they used to. They know who I am, and I know what they are. So what are they? God only knows. Science is currently trying to figure that out as hair samples are being rigorously tested for signs of DNA evidence and the results of those evidences are about to go public. Science can only show what can be seen and the fact it finds will try to deny what I've seen and experienced as well as the experiences of what others have seen. I am not the only one who has seen Bigfoot come and go like the way of angels. Just like the Native American First Nations have always spoken about, the time has come where legend meets reality. <laughs>